everyone. I'm here with Ronnie Rayfield and I am Justine Dorn and here we are with one of our favorite foods. Well we're about to make it at least. So we have everything here to make it. Deviled eggs. I love deviled eggs. I love them so much. It's weird because I don't like just eating boiled eggs on their own but once you add the mayo and the mustard and the salt and the pepper it is so good. Yes. Is that also one of your favorite foods? I could have sworn you I, told me it was. <laughs> I, I love deviled eggs, but just like you, I don't care for boiled eggs, but mm -hmm. there's just something about deviled eggs, I, I love them. Right, once you add all that together, it's so good. And why do they call it deviled eggs? Because they're spicy, like the devil. And deviled <laughs> eggs are very old. They've, they've been around for a couple hundred years, so maybe even a little longer than that. Problem is, I cannot find a period recipe anywhere. I can't find it anywhere I look. It might go by a completely different name. Um, I'm not sure, but it, that would be strange because they've been called deviled eggs since at least the 18th, 17th century because of the spiciness in them. But I can't find a period recipe. I can only find references of them saying that they've been around that long and that they had certain ingredients in them but I don't have an actual intact receipt. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make half of these eggs using our recipe for deviled eggs, just a modern recipe. And then the other half, we're gonna make it according to the ingredients that I found were in deviled eggs. And I'm just gonna kind of plug in what I think it probably looked like. I have a description of it. I know that they, just like with modern deviled eggs, you would have taken the yolk out and you would have blended it with some kind of a dairy product, with mustard, with salt and pepper. So we're gonna see how that goes. <laughs> so, Sounds great to me. Yeah, what do you wanna do first? Do you wanna do the modern deviled eggs or do you wanna do my interpretation of historic deviled Let's eggs? Let's do your interpretation of historic deviled eggs. Okay, so we're gonna do half and half. So how many eggs we got here? We're gonna split it. we got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, we have eight. So you can cut two and I'll cut two. Okay. What we're going to do first is we're going to get the yolk separate from the white. And this can be a little tricky to do. Because sometimes the uh, white will break, but you don't want it to break. Ta -da! <laughs> Good job. Thank you. I'll just put it down there. It's okay to break the yolk because we're going to mash them up later anyway, but the whites. Where do I put the yolk? Oh, yeah, you could do it like that too. We have different methods, but we always get to the same Where's conclusion. Where's the yolk? Right here. Oh, oh how'd you do that? That's, whole, that's one whole piece. <laughs> you bounce it against the wall or something. You could just put it in here, just the yolk. You can do it like how I'm doing it, or you can do it like how Ron's doing it. It really doesn't matter. I see what you're doing, that's cool. Mm -hmm. At the end, you're gonna get to the same destination. But which way is safer? Well, obviously not my way. My <laughs> way is never safe. I will say yours are cleaner. <laughs> so here's mine, it left a little bit of yolk behind. Mm. And hers is really clean. Oh. Okay, this one is a little, this one isn't as clean. And that's just how the reality of deviled eggs goes. See, this one did get split in half. But it's not ruined. No, as long as you have the white shell, because this is going to be our plate, you could say. We're going to fill that with the yolk. So you need it to be intact. I'm done. So am I. <laughs> that was easy, that was painless. That's how much yolk we got out of four eggs. So there's some sort of dairy product. They did not have mayonnaise back then. No. No. So I have seen some references say that they would have used cream or butter instead of mayonnaise for the deviled eggs. So I got a little bit of butter here. For this quantity of yolk, I definitely don't, don't need a ton, ton of butter. Maybe, Maybe a teaspoon. Maybe exactly. a tablespoon, a tablespoon of butter. Right. And they also did not have relish, like modern uh, pickle relish. relish. 
So I'm gonna add just onions. Just a little. More. You want more? There's a tiny bit. Tiny, tiny bit, there you go. And mustard. It definitely would have had mustard. The references I've seen, they always had mustard in them. And we love mustard. Yes, we do. Everyone loved mustard back then. Salt and pepper, of course. Could you add the pepper, please? Are we out of pepper? There's guys coming out. Well, while you do that, I'm gonna get a fork. Okay. No, keep doing it. We like pepper. <laughs> pepper is good. I hear them in there. I think it's just wore out. And I'm gonna add a little dash of paprika. That's what it looks like. It already smells good. Right. And I'm just gonna mash it together with the back of a fork. The yolks have been boiled really good, so they'll just mash really easy. And you want to mash it till it looks like a cream. Cannot wait to try these. <laughs> it already looks like this. I don't think it'll be quite as good as mayonnaise-based deviled eggs, but right. it has all of the groundwork for deviled eggs in there. Some foods just haven't really changed that much. I think this dish has even been around since the medieval period in Europe. It probably just had a different name. A lot of things had different names back then. Mm -hmm. Though I do know they were called deviled eggs since at least 18th, 17th century. But earlier than that, maybe they had a different name. Oh yeah, looking good. <laughs> Looks a little drier than what we're used to, but... It does. Maybe I should have more butter. Add more mustard. We like our mustard. Yeah, we like mustard. Maybe one more teaspoon of mustard. Okay. And then a little smidge of butter. And then a little bit more butter. Butter makes everything better, just like bacon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no truer, wiser words have ever been said. Let's see here. By the way, I hope everybody had a great yes. happy Easter. Easter. <laughs> happy late Easter, <laughs> yes. whenever you're watching this. We dyed some Easter eggs. If you guys like to see mm -hmm. the video of Justin dyeing those eggs, please go to Early American, mm -hmm. and you can watch her dye a couple dozen of eggs. Yes. Really neat how they did it back to him using the skins and uh, some fruits and some vegetables. She mm -hmm. decided to use what is in season in our location at this time of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other methods, but. Right, they, which is why I didn't use berries. Yeah. Because they wouldn't have had berries. Berries aren't ready yet. They're so. not, yeah, they wouldn't have had berries to dye. And once you dry the fruit, a lot of the pigment is gone, so you can't use dried blueberries, for example. I don't, you'd have to use a lot of them to get a decent oh, pigment. Yeah. And that's. Just, I mean, they're so precious. If you've ever grown mm -hmm. blueberries, you know how hard it is to grow them. You probably wouldn't use them for Ooh. dying eggs in that quantity, at least. This is looking really good. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more put together now that we added more butter. Can't wait to try them. Well, let's, let's go ahead. Let's do this. Okay. This is a delicate operation here. <laughs> just flop it in yeah, there. Just flop it As in there. As you say, it's delicate. <laughs> Those are our chickens outside. Yeah, they're, they're saying, what are you using our eggs for? Yeah, they're mad if we took them all. There you go. One. <laughs> and we're not going to try these until we get them all done. Here's another fork. Here you go, Ron. You can help me. Okay, thank you. For a moment, I thought you were reaching for it to eat it. No, no, no. We're going to wait till we sit <laughs> down. We'll try them both together once both yes. variations are complete. We'll probably just pause it here. We'll like stop it here. Okay. Yeah, they're slippery. They're kind of sliding all over the place. I just gotta really load them up. 
The stuff even grew on them. Yeah, you gotta load them up. I wasn't sure if we were gonna have a lot, but it looks like we do, which is good. I mean, it didn't double, but it. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit more. Oh, it looks so good. Look at that. Either you eat this or <laughs> you eat it. I'll eat it. Sure. Thank you. Alright. You can talk. I'll eat it. How about that? I said that we were not going to try them until we had both side by side ready to go, but. But this ain't them. That's them. Right. We have some extra filling and Ron's eating it and he likes it. <laughs> So next we're going to try the modern version of deviled eggs, which is very, very similar. I mean, really the only difference is it has relish in it and it has mayonnaise. But mayonnaise might make a huge difference. I don't know. It'll is make it, it more creamier. Right. More creamy. Is it good? It's good. You sure you don't want to try it? I'm going to wait. Mm. Really? Very mustardy. That's really good. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm glad we added that much mustard because that is good. Yeah. We're adding that much mustard to the modern batch too. Moving on. Deviled eggs are dangerous around me. I am obsessed. I will. I could seriously eat a whole tray of deviled eggs. I don't I know what'll happen to my body after that, but I would do it. You know what happened to me. I know what would happen to you. <laughs> and so do all of you. <laughs> which is why we should probably give you some ginger after you're done eating today. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, cut the next batch, the remaining four. All right, I'm gonna try it your way. Go in. Mm. I mean, I'll admit, your way is very efficient. My way is safer. <laughs> yes. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> that does look pretty. Good job, Ron. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, not bad. That's the best it's gonna get. What do you mean? It doesn't get better than that. What do you got? I have to cut it a little bit deeper. Well, I'm surprised because usually I mess up on one of them and one of the whites gets torn to shreds, but we didn't do that with not even a single one. I guarantee that is not normal. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to add mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. And this is real mayonnaise. This isn't the Miracle Whip. This is mayonnaise. No. You gotta get that tangy stuff. They're completely stuff. different. Yeah, don't interchange them. Miracle Whip is mayonnaise with sugar. Let's see if I need more later. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. A little bit of relish. Oh. And not so little bit of mustard. These are gonna be wet. They are. <laughs> Salt and pepper. Go ahead, Ron. Since apparently it's going to take a while. <laughs> it's in there. And paprika. There's like one in there. I'm going to add a little bit more because these weren't very spicy. Oh, we can sprinkle some on top too for decoration. Right, we could. You're right. Whoa! What have I done? <laughs> I don't think it's coming out of here. Why is it's it not feeding. We can't have double eggs without black pepper. How are we going to survive? It's a 
coming out? No, now it's not coming out at all. The first time it was. This mm. plastic thing. I think it was working the first time. Hold on. Is that black pepper? Uh. No. It was working the first time. Did you loosen it up? I broke it. You broke it? Well, now what are we going to do, Ryan? I don't know. There's Let's... whole black peppercorns in there. You're just going to have to crush them with your Ugh. teeth and spit them out. I figure out how to get this thing off. <clears throat> I don't remember. Well, normally the recipe has black pepper in it, <laughs> but maybe it won't today. <laughs> nope. Oh, man. Nope. Okay, I'll go mash it up. We'll just have to make two without yeah. the black pepper. The next time you see us, we're not going to have this anymore. I think we'll have a pot. Like with our yeah. salt pot. <laughs> That's a very foolproof way. I'm trying to think if we have any anywhere, but I don't think we do. We have a mortar and pestle, but it'll take I a while. I can't get this out though. Oh, even from the bottom? I don't remember how it comes out. This is supposed mm. to unscrew some way, mm. somehow. Hold on, it's doing something now. Let's see. Nope. Oh. Oh. There's one in there. Oh, well, that's why. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Get the mortar and pestle. Yeah. I don't know what's in there. Ron saves the day! Uh, better than nothing. This looks good. Do you want to taste it? Oh, uh, that's good. That is so Maybe it's good. More relish. I like relish. Just a little bit more, please. Well, since you said please, you're the whole thing. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. That is so good. And it's not spicy, honestly. No. I would add more. Can I add more? Sure. Paprika isn't really hot. It's not on the same level as cayenne pepper. No, definitely not. We do have cayenne pepper in here. We do. It's in that little orange thing up there. We do. What are you trying to say? You want to add some pepper? Well, I mean, <laughs> we didn't have black pepper, so we could do a little tiny pinch. Let me see how this tastes. And if it's not hot, we can... Really make it the devil's food. Yes, ma'am. Bring out the cayenne. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And while he does that, I think I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit on our old style eggs. Oh, thank you. All oh, those look nice. They do. Hopefully that's not too much. No. No. <laughs> I, I know I don't look like it, but I can take some heat. Yeah, she likes the spicy stuff. I do like spicy food. I like semi-spicy stuff. I like to think I like spicy stuff mm -hmm. until my mouth's on fire that it's... I don't like mm -hmm. spicy stuff. <laughs> well. Good. I still don't taste much heat, but we're going for it. Okay. And only Ron and I are eating this, which is why I'm licking the fork. So. Yeah. <laughs> no one else is going to eat it. Well, there's a little bit of an afterburn, but just a little bit. Because all the mayonnaise we added, this mixture doubled. So we're going to have to really overstuff them. I'm okay with that. We'll eat this whole plate <laughs> by yourself. Mmm, that's so good. Ron's gonna say, "Oh, Justine, I think the chickens need to be put up, or I think we need to get more water." And then I head out and I come back and there's <laughs> nothing left. Oh, they're they're probably already thinking. Yeah, Ron's probably gonna eat seven or eight of these. Who's gonna eat more, Ron or Justine? Yeah, who's gonna eat more, Ron or Justine? I think it's gonna be a dead tie. 
Ding, ding, ding. Quieter stats. Ron. Okay. <clears throat> Six, two. I don't even know how that is. <coughs> that is spicy. Are you kidding me? No. Justine, five, three. 123 pounds. <coughs> Who's going to win? <coughs> Obviously. That burns. What are you talking about? It's not even My that My nose is running. You didn't mess it up good then because I got all the well, pepper. Maybe, maybe you got one bite but I had more. We'll see. Well, I know I'll eat the other eight. But... Maybe you just can't handle it like me. Perhaps. Yes, I just did that. It's so good. Oh, my brother said you said. <laughs> it's so good that I'm licking the handle I'm licking the of my fork. Because none of this is going to waste. Let's see, let's keep them separate. Let's put parsley on these. Okay. Yeah, you don't want me to put more paprika on it? Nope. Don't get any more heat. And now we so we know which is which. Now you know why they're called double eggs. Because once we sit down, it all just kind of becomes a blur to me. Yeah. If it's in the, my path and my fork. It's a blur. <laughs> <laughs> like you enter some kind of a mental state warp speed oh, eating zone yeah where everything's blurred well there you go we used up all of our stuffing very efficient mm -hmm. as you can see we got the green ones for the modern and the red ones for the historic ones well let's try it I'm ready to uh, try. Which one you want to try first? Um, let's try the historic ones first. Cheers. Ding. It's very simple. It's very good. The mustard, of course, is what makes it. The only thing I don't like about it mm. is the onions. But mm. y'all know I don't like onions. But it's good. It's very good. It's good. I okay. Like the mustard's good. Mm. All right. Round two. <laughs> this is gonna be good. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> One word, flavor. Mm. A lot of flavor. The modern ones have way more flavor than the historic mm. ones do. The mayonnaise gives it mm -hmm. a thing. The only thing right. it's missing mm -hmm. is the pepper, of course. <laughs> I like how you picked it up and it nearly <laughs> fell apart. Because you get the heat from the cayenne, but <laughs> the, the black pepper, I love mm. black pepper. I don't taste it because it's not there, but... Mm. Excellent job on these. They're it's really good. good. You're right, more black pepper would make it nice. Now, enough teasing. How does your mouth feel, though? My mouth's actually okay. The, the egg white cooled it down. Mm. Now, can we stop teasing our bellies and eat our full meal? Yes. All right. Let's we're going to get this cleaned up, and we're going to eat our full Let's meal. Let's do it. Now that's better. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. yes. <laughs> so what do we have here today? We have ham. Because it's Easter, you have to have ham. Deviled eggs, of, of course. I mean, that goes without explanation. We have green beans. I love, love green beans. And Ron makes them very good. So I'm going to eat probably half of that bowl at least. And extra mustard extra just in mustard. case we need it. <laughs> um, and then afterwards, we have some chocolate. Ron was gifted chocolate in the shape of his name, R, and I got chocolate in the shape of J for Justine. And Ron's mom kindly gave this to us as an Easter present. Yeah. It smells really good. Not yet. You can't eat it yet. <coughs> no. Fine. Are we seriously about to eat seven, eight deviled eggs each person? We're missing some. There it is. The mushroom ketchup. 
Really? You want that? I, I, we got mustard, mm -hmm. but we can't turn our backs on mushroom ketchup. You do that? I'm gonna just go with mustard okay. today. Okay, well, I'll, I'll put it. <laughs> I'm feeling mustard. I'll... I'm okay, feeling okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Could you pass me <clears throat> the uh, green beans, please? Yes. Thank you. I'll refrain from mushroom ketchup today. So, well, you can have it. You can have it even oh, okay. without me. Okay. I'm just saying for me, I'm, I'm in a mustard mood. One moment. Let me go get that. Mm -hmm. Well, is that for the pork? Yes, ma'am. Mm. Oh, those green beans look good. Oh, thank you. For they sure. They smell very good. Would you like some of the ham? Yes, please. Would you cut me a chunk? Yes, so. will. How big? Half? A little less than half. <clears throat> nice. Mmm, that looks very nice. And I'm just gonna go ahead already and get this <laughs> on there. Me too. Since I know already I'm gonna want it. Mm. <clears throat> sure no, I'm, I'm going for mustard oh, okay. today. Don't think I've turned my back on it. It's just sometimes I want something else. <laughs> Sometimes. Before we start, we'll say grace. I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you to the farmers that grew this food. Thank you to the truckers who drove this food to us. Thank you to everyone watching us today. And I hope that all of your families are blessed. Amen. Amen. What's a trucker? I'm just kidding. I read it in a book. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. Can I pass the water? Oh. Or did we already? Nope. nope. Thank you. <laughs> Would you like some more? Oh, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to know when mustard was invented, as in when it was a cream and not just a powder. I know there's going to be someone who's going to let us know, so please do, in the comment section, let us know when was mustard invented. I'm awfully curious. I have yet to read about that in a book. Hmm. I know it was very popular in the 18th century, at least. How fast is back to you? If it falls off, it's your fault, not mine. Mm -hmm. I don't like the breakable stuff over here, because I'll oh, get blamed for This it. is pretty breakable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Good. Mm -mm -mm. That is good. I was in the green beans. Let's see, Ron's green beans. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Not bad. It's good. <laughs> the opposite of bad. Very good. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> would they have hidden? What games would they have done back then with Easter eggs? Did, would they do games like we do today? Uh, you mean you're talking about Easter egg hunts and yeah, all like that? Yeah, like Easter egg hunts. They would have rolled eggs down a hill. Hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the game that they had. They would have had, it's kind of like a race, but with eggs. So you would have picked your favorite egg, and you'd have a lineup of people on top of a hill, and you would have gently rolled it, not thrown it, but it'd probably break, but just roll it down the hill, and whoever A gets to that bottom of the hill first wins. Can we do that later? 
Sure, we can do it later. Okay. <laughs> I'll win. What makes you so confident in that? Because I ain't got... I know which egg's gonna win. <laughs> the shape of it or something? Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm not gonna tell you though. Because then you'll pick that egg. The shape of the egg, eh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll tell you. The more rounded the egg is, the more ball-like, so it might roll better. If you get an oval-shaped egg, it's only going to roll, and then once it gets sideways, it's not going to roll because it's going to be longer instead of symmetrical. I'd reply to that that my cheeks are stuffed. <laughs> We spent it with my family. Mm -hmm. We had a nice dinner. Yes, we did. We had chicken. Not one of these chickens. Not one of our chickens. Don't worry. <laughs> they live to see another day. Mm hmm. We had lemon chicken, rice. Ham and cheesecake. Cheesecake, yep, and mm -hmm. salad. Mm -hmm. So, what was your favorite thing about Easter growing up? Hmm. Definitely the Easter egg hunt. That was fun. Yeah. And honestly, we still do it. I mean, it's been two years, but up to then, we were still doing it. But we would always hide them in our house. We wouldn't hide them outside. Hmm. We would hide them in our house. Which was great until one year, one of us forgot, and we couldn't find one, and we just kind of forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And then a month later, it started smelling really bad oh, no. in our dining room. And... Uh, then the cat kind of rolled out this rotten <laughs> egg from under a table. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, usually I win. Really? Yeah, usually I win. And then we always have a special egg. Uh, not a gold, not like a golden egg, because we can't even afford that. But I mean, we have one egg that's a different color than all the other eggs, and that's the special egg. And if you win that, you win more points. Oh, nice. My favorite is coloring them and then chocolate. Mm. The hunting was fun. I liked hiding them more than finding them. The hiding was fun, especially when there's younger siblings involved, mm -hmm. cousins and stuff. You make it really hard. Mm. Then you sit back and watch. And He's so close, but he's never going to find it. <laughs> you just sit back and laugh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's going in the wrong direction. <laughs> Can you do that one year? Can you hide eggs and can I find them? Because if you don't do it, no one's going to do it for me. Do you want to do that instead of rolling them? We can do both. Okay. But it means I, ha I don't have a competitor. It's just me versus myself. For finding them? Uh-huh. Here's what we do. <clears throat> you hide Ed's in the backyard. I'll hide Ed's in the front yard. And then I'll try to find them in the backyard, and you try to find them in the front yard. Hmm. Okay. That could work. We can do that. Four eggs each. Four eggs? Yep. Had to find all four eggs. <clears throat> we can put a time limit on it. We can. Don't, you have, don't you have a watch, pocket watch on your shelling? I do. Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Yeah, ten minutes. I mean, like, two minutes. Oh, <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> you can't hide them off in the woods somewhere. It has to stay where we've cleared the... Kind of by the path. Yeah, inside of the fence perimeter. Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. 
compromise. Mm -hmm. This is really good. I like it. Mm -hmm. I'm just stuffing my face. Nothing to see here. Got me a new mug. Right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You like it? I do like it. Mm -hmm. It's from Candy Store, Sassafras Creek, Rituals yeah. in St. Genevieve. It's a Salt Blaze red, Redware mug. He was lying it for a while. I would. Like the last six months. I was gonna say, for a while since last year. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hmm. Historic or modern? Historic, modern, historic, modern, historic. You gotta, you gotta do some rhyme or reason to it. Hmm? It's like, I, don't, I barely remember this, but eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If your mother says no, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'll eat one of them too. Hmm? <laughs> they are very tangy. Mm -hmm. Compared to the historic ones. You think that's the mayo doing that or the relish? Both. Mm. <clears throat> mm. I'm try it's good. Oh yeah. We're mustard people. <laughs> Ketchup is good, but mustard, that's where it's at. Here's an art to mustard. There's so many different types of mustard. Do you like horseradish? No. Do you like... I don't. Um, what else is there? What other kind of sauces are there? you like cocktail sauce? What's cocktail sauce? Is that that red sauce? Yeah, you dump shrimp in it. No, I don't like it. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't either. I hate wasabi. I don't know if I've tried that. <clears throat> you like, go ahead. Wasabi tastes like horseradish because most wasabi, especially sold in the West, is green dyed horseradish. Mm. And you don't like horseradish? Yeah. I actually don't like the flavor. It has this really strange bite to it. It burns my nose. Yeah, it's not like spicy pepper. It's more like the spiciness you get from a raw onion or, a, or ginger. Hmm. And sometimes that's, that just hurts. <laughs> Even though I like ginger. I like pickled ginger. Hmm. That was far of a bone. Hmm. I remember when I was hard to cut. Oh my. Try yeah. to get part of the bone. Don't swallow that. <laughs> <laughs> Do I you have... like tartar sauce? No. Honey mustard. I like it a bit, but I like spicy mustard. I can't think of any other ones. <laughs> you didn't ask me if I even like mayonnaise. <gasps> oh wow, you like mayonnaise? A little bit. I like it when it's mixed with ketchup. I don't really like it on its own much, hmm. unless it's a really, really tiny, tiny amount, and it's mixed with other stuff more so. Hmm. Hmm. What about Miracle Whip? Nope. Oh. Nope. Hmm. Do you like Miracle Whip? <clears throat> uh, when I was younger, I did. What do people use Miracle Whip for? On sandwiches or salads. Same thing you use mayonnaise for. It's just oh. a sweet, it's mayonnaise with sugar in it, basically. <clears throat> That's why it tastes good. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> mayonnaise with sugar in it? When I was a kid, all I'd use was Miracle Whip. And then 
<clears throat> as an adult, I started using man or started using mayonnaise. Because you became a man. And now mm -hmm. I don't use either because it's just bad mm. for you. It's fatty, mm. very fatty. So I always eat a sandwich without it. But I used to slather it on bread for every sandwich. Now I don't touch it. So sweet mayonnaise sounds like something you would prank someone with by putting well, it in an icing jar and saying, oh, there's cake icing. It's not like a dessert. It's They put just enough in there to where you're like, hmm, that's good. Why is it good? Why? Why is it good? Because <laughs> of sugar. Yeah, you got to tell me because it don't sound good. <laughs> I don't have an answer for you on that. <sighs> I'm full. You're full? I'm full. Justine wins. I am not full. You still got stuff in your plate. Yeah, but I'm not even close to being full. I've ate more eggs <laughs> than you. No, you haven't. And more meat. Mm -mm. Yeah, I did. You had bone. Check the tape. We're going to rewind this and we're going to look. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hit set replay. <laughs> What's that fire doing? It's going. Yeah, they often do that. <laughs> it, hurt, it hurt us talking bad about Miracle Whip and it got kind of offended. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know you like buffalo sauce. Oh, yeah. I love buffalo sauce. And blue cheese. I love blue cheese sauce. <laughs> what about French dressing? I love French dressing. Vinegar and oil. French dressing? I think it's Italian dressing. No, I'm saying, do you like vinegar and oil? Oh. I'm, I'm rattling them off. Yeah, I do like it. <laughs> A lot. Italian dressing. Mm hmm Ranch. Yeah. What else is there? Caesar. Hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Poppy seed. Get out of my house if you dare bring Caesar dressing over ranch. You're not welcome here or in the Midwest. Get out. <laughs> anyway, what's the next one? Poppy mm -hmm. seed. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not not like the top three, but it's pretty good. No, oh, okay. <clears throat> hmm. I don't know any other ones. Thank you. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. Do you want to try your chocolate? In the shape of an R? Sure. I'll try that. Go for it. Here we go. It's pretty good. <laughs> chocolate, deviled eggs, mushroom ketchup, ham, garlic <sighs> green beans. Here we go. <laughs> Does R taste good? R, it tastes good. <laughs> mm hmm. That's good. Really? Okay, but it's not. Now you just have an O. Oh no, it's a D. There you go. JD. Hmm. Or DJ. Those are my initials, by the way. JD. Justine Dorn. Well, how thoughtful of your mom to get me two Easter presents. That was very nice of her. She got me a J and a D. Yeah. I'll just eat I'll just eat both of them. Thank you. <laughs> You're right ahead. <clears throat> no, I'll save it good. for you. That was good. Hmm. Hmm. I'm so full. I take a nap now. I don't know what's happening. Usually, I'm still eating, but <laughs> I prefer a nap now. What's going on? I worked hard. Usually, today. I'm still eating. I chop up that whole tree today. Hmm. This guy's a foot taller than me, but we usually eat about the same. Usually. Mm -hmm. Roughly. Like by the end of the day, we've consumed the same amount of food. Mm -hmm. She eats massive lunches. <laughs> yeah. Like it's crazy how big the lunches are. I eat a <laughs> medium breakfast, medium lunch, and huge dinner. She <laughs> eats a teeny tiny breakfast, massive lunch, and small dinner. Right. I don't know. This how is you dinner, do it. by the way. Yeah, but I I cheated. I had some snacks earlier, so. 
I know, I was there with you eating the snacks. Well, I just finished the wood, so mm -hmm. I needed something. My breakfast usually consists of a piece of toast with spreadable cheese on it and a cup of tea. Yeah. Sometimes a bowl of strawberries with it. Well, that's usually my breakfast. My lunch usually consists of... Avocado. I don't really have, like, one lunch I go to. I guess a huge bowl... Salad? Of salad mixed with some kind of grain. Couscous or... <clears throat> chicken and a lot of cheese and a bowl of soup and bread and chocolate <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's more I just can't think right now because every day is different honestly I mean a, a big salad don't really sound like a lot when I say it Big salad. Big salad. I mean, I, I literally eat it out of a mixing bowl. <clears throat> but don't you think that I am healthy now? Because that's a lie. I eat a lot of sugar. <laughs> and I eat a lot of junk food too, unfortunately. <clears throat> well, when I say junk food, I mean... Healthy junk food. Real food. Like, I never, ever, ever eat processed food. I, I don't eat that stuff. I don't eat Cheetos... Doritos. I don't eat that <clears> stuff <throat> ever. Uh huh. Just the uh, sour gummy worms and gummy bears. Yeah, and... sugar. I eat a lot of sugar, so that's my thing. I I eat a lot of sugar. <laughs> mm hmm. Unfortunately. I know where you hide the gummy bears. I've seen them. He literally sneaks them in my bag. <laughs> well, I want to surprise you, so I put them in there with a note and. It's very sweet, but he. Okay, so two weeks ago, he filled a, a bag with gummy bears, and he snuck it into my work bag. And he wrote on the bag, I love you, and he put it in my work bag. And then so when I get to work, I'm looking through my bag, and I'm like, what is this? It's a bag of gummy bears, a really big one, too. And I'm like, and my first reaction is, aw, thank you, Ron, I love you, too. When, and I told him that. But then my next reaction was, oh, no. I'm about to binge so bad <laughs> on gummy bears because I'm I'm the sort where if it's in front of me, I have to eat it. I'm that way too. So for our house someday, I want us to not have sweets in our house. I'm okay with that. Because I can't say no to them. Except for ice cream. Ice cream? I'm not saying no to ice cream. I'll say no to everything else. I can do without candy, but can I have some ice cream? You want ice cream in the house? Can't we just go out and get ice cream sometime? We can make ice cream ourselves now. Right, we, we have an ice cream machine. Yeah, or Ron maker. made it. <clears throat> Ron made it. It's in a wooden barrel and then the inside is tin and you just shake it. We'll show you guys later. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Another day. Yeah, that's for that's another story mm -hmm. for another day. Right. That was just a preview. <laughs> that dinner was really good. Yeah, you ready to go hide some eggs? No, I'm ready to go eat some. <sighs> Chocolate. Mm. Well. Normally we like dark chocolate. This is milk mm. chocolate. It's very milky. Yeah, it is. Milk chocolate smells good. Dark chocolate usually doesn't have a smell to me. Hmm. I've never sniffed them. I just eat them. Well, I like experiencing food with all my <laughs> senses. You can hear it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You can smell it, you can feel it, <laughs> you can taste it. <laughs> that is really good. Now it's a tea. What's tea for? Lord, I don't know. <laughs> Terry? Terry? Tom? Tom? Kobe? Tina? My middle name, Teresa. Teresa. <laughs> that 
That's my middle name, Teresa. Justine well, Teresa. Well, lucky you, you got all three initials. Right? right? Well, I got all Lord, three but... initials out of just <clears throat> J and R. <laughs> We had a few people ask about our silver spoons. They're not silver, they're pewter. Right. They're from our uh, good friends in St. Jen at the ASL Pewter Foundry. They make these spoons. And they really are good friends. We eat dinner at their house all the time. And they're 10 cats. Oh. Big African cats. They're big like, African cats. They're like, not. <laughs> yeah. They scare you. When they're be... fighting with each other, it's like two lions. It's like. <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> The last time we were having dinner at their place, and by the way, their house is an old ice storage. Yeah, the room? the house is the old ice house, I think. Of Saint Genevieve. But the shop is the old stables. It's like a conglomerate. Mm -hmm. So it's been converted, but it's a 19th century building. 18th and 19th. It's 18th and 19th. Wow, yeah, that's really the cool. The stables part. That's cool. So anyway, we're eating dinner at their place. Just picture it like this. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and behind us, they're just going freaking crazy. I mean, they're seriously going crazy behind us. <laughs> and they're just, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're just casually eating like it never happened. Meanwhile, <laughs> Ron, Ron's reaction was hilarious. <clears throat> well, I thought I was going to get swiped, you know. <laughs> the thing's got claws on this long. They, hi they fight with each other. I don't remember what they're called, but I know it's like five thousand dollars for one cat. It's crazy. Right. Um. Let's let's visually explain it. I mean, it's they're the size of a dog. It's like this tall. Mhm. Mm the head on them like it's like this big. <laughs> Tail this long. It almost like a bobcat. Can you insert a picture? I don't know what they're called, but I'll look for some. Let's just so, Google Savannah. So these cat. slides right here. Here, here we go. I'm flipping through uh -huh. them. Right here. <laughs> Imagine us eating dinner and some of them are just on the table. They just jump. They, they just jump on the up, table. They they go from here. There's a ramp on jump the ceiling. Up to the top of the cabinets and you know, be like a lion up there. <laughs> and then jump down. <laughs> and they're so used to this that they don't even flinch. But we're just trying to eat our dinner and they're like behind us are <laughs> 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 and we're just trying to act like this oh, isn't man. going on. You know, because we're trying to play it cool. Yeah, like we're not scared. Yeah, like we're not scared. We don't want to offend them because they love their cats. Yeah, they do. Their cats are their kids. They and the love cats them. are nice. They just like to play. Yeah. When big kitties play, they don't go meow. And, and they're go, Rawr. I think these cats are honestly more territorial than normal house cats. Hmm. And, I mean, their house has how many of them? Well, they're from the, the jungle, so. They yeah, they're from the jungle. Or the Savannah, but um, their house has half a dozen of them. So you imagine they're very territorial and they're confined in that space. Yeah. So if they brush up against each other, you're sitting there enjoying your sausage and green beans and all of a sudden. <laughs> You know, you just gotta, you just gotta play it off. You gotta act cool like that just did not happen. And then 30 seconds later, <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> and repeat over and over until you leave. <laughs> so, anyways, check out ASL Peter and Saint Jude. <laughs> and their cats are there in the shop. They'll be lounging in the chairs. Oh, yeah, they're in the store. So when you walk in, uh, look to your right or your left. There's winter chairs. Um, there and mm -hmm. they'll be, they'll usually be laying they're in the chairs. They're Savannah cats. <laughs> they're, they're friendly. Mm hmm Yeah, they won't ever hurt you. Candy, they're very nice. Candy should get an animal for her shop. <laughs> You're already an animal. Well, okay. <laughs> what should she get? Well, she's got Dale too. Dale's an animal. Yeah, Dale is that guy that she's been <laughs> seeing. Yeah. The one that's probably on all the wanted posters around town, but we don't want to break the news, sir, that he looks exactly like him. We don't want to break her heart and separate him. It, it looks exactly like him because I drew it. <laughs> they made fun of me. We we wanted... You so drew that? Lehman or Dale, I forget what we called him in there. That's actually Candy's real life husband. Mm. And so we wanted to make him a wanted man, and I was like, it'd be so cool if the sheriff hung up a wanted poster. But we don't have a picture of Dale that's sketched by hand, so I laid the piece of computer paper over one of his Facebook photos. No, wait, 
trying you were trying to draw his son. Oh yeah, I was trying I was actually trying to draw his son. His son. His, but it turned out looking like Dale. His son is the one that beat him up. Yeah. Real bad. Buddy. He those are the two men. That's in that his video. actual son. So a lot of us honestly were either really good friends or we're family. Yeah. In real life. Yeah. It, so, it's it's fun. It's it's very fun. So he was trying to draw <laughs> he was trying to draw his son and then I looked at it, I was standing over his shoulder and I said, That looks more like Dale yeah. and then we just went with it. Yeah, so we we made the one poster for Dale. I forgot right. that. We were gonna make Buddy the one. Yeah, his Buddy. name's Buddy. But it worked out good. Candy didn't leave it hung up in her in her shop. She should have. But... No, because she knows it looks too much like him, and she don't want someone really <laughs> turning him in for a bounty. <laughs> He's wanted for murder and piracy. Is what we're <laughs> under. A hundred dollars. Yeah, hundred dollars. <laughs> I'll have to find that. Who is gonna? I'll, I'll stick it in here so they can see. Who's it. gonna turn in someone for a hundred dollars these days? Hey, hundred bucks. I mean, that you could fill up your your tank full of gas for a hundred dollars. Depends on what you drive. Go from here to the grocery store and yeah. then come on back for a hundred bucks. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about It'll it. Make me mad. It's bad. Mm. Mm. That's really good chocolate, though. Different subject. Hmm. With everything going on in the world right now, people say that his living history people or reenactors <clears throat> got it made to the electric go out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think they're right about that. Yeah. If you don't have a garden, do a garden. It'll help. Right. A lot of modern houses just aren't set up to survive off of the grid. I mean, you can get buckets, containers, mm -hmm. and put them on your back patio. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen tomato plants in those hanging flower baskets and they'll grow down. Tomatoes? Yeah, because they, tomatoes finger out kind of, mm -hmm. but they'll, they'll, they'll dangle down and the bushes will be big and they'll have tomatoes. Uh, I mean, you can't grow potatoes like that, but. I, I mean, you have, you have so little backyard, you can literally stand and do a circle and walk back inside. Well, you can still grow potatoes back there. I mean, back then, people really got resourceful and used what they had. So today, you got to really put your thinking cap on. Mm. But uh, there's something to think about. Yeah. I mean, I've told, I've told this to Ron before, but if something really bad happens, the Amish won't even notice. No, they won't. They'll just go on with their lives like it's another day. Yeah, they they're living a good life. They're living a good life. Yeah. I mean, of course, there's a downside to every <coughs> lifestyle on the planet. Mm -hmm. There's always a downside. Yeah. But at least for them, if something really goes bad and food prices are insane and gas prices and all that. They don't drive. They have their own food. Yeah. And they don't use electricity. Right, they don't. I mean, some of their things are diesel powered. That's yeah, how they and steam, cheat. That's and how they get powered. around their rules, but they definitely don't use as much gas as we do. Yeah, that's true. As a modern society, I mean. I mean, even having the tools to do mm -hmm. some of the things, if you don't have them, <clears throat> you're really going to have to improvise or make your own. Or right. know somebody who does. Yeah, know somebody that does. That's why it's so important to have a blacksmith at every settlement back then, mm -hmm. um, a guy that fits wheels. <clears throat> I mean, even today, you got somebody, a, a small garage that works on automobiles mm. in your town, probably. <clears throat> right. Uh, if yeah. you didn't have that, you'd be... <laughs> out of luck. Yeah, yeah. Out, out of luck if your car broke down. So back then, if your wagon broke down, you you need somebody to fix the wheel. That's tricky business. A real white... I can't say it. Real white... <laughs> a real right... <laughs> a guy that fits his wagon wheels is, uh, is a trade all its own. Mm. And, it's a dino one, but uh, with things expensive, you can grow some of your food. I recommend you do that. Mm -hmm. It helps. Every little penny helps, and it adds up. It might you might Tell think, me. oh, it's only thirteen dollars more this week. Well, if you do that for weeks, weeks, and weeks and weeks, that adds up. Tell them what we're growing. <clears throat> uh, what are we growing? I think potatoes. I'm, potatoes. Green beans. Green beans. Peas. Turnips. Peas. Turnips. Onions, and carrots, and that's a very small garden. Yeah. Right. Once we get our forever home, we're gonna grow everything. 
and butcher our own meat and all that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm a very old-fashioned person. Yeah. Once we move out to our forever house, I'm okay with having a cook stove. I'm okay with doing laundry off-grid with just a metal bu- bucket and an agitator. And uh, we're going to have a wood-burning furnace. Ron's dad, he has a wood-burning mm-hmm. furnace, and his house gets hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it works very good. It gives you very hot water, and it heats up your whole house. Mm-hmm. So, but that's just me. Not everyone can live like that, but I like that life. Yeah. I know some people might think it's weird, but I like being connected with my everyday rituals. I don't like just putting clothes in a washer, shutting the door, and walking away. I like being connected with the process a mm-hmm. little bit more. It's I'm hard the to. Same ex- way. Oh, yeah. It's hard to explain why I'm this way. I don't know. It's just in my mind to be like this ever since I was a kid. Hmm. And you know I've always wanted a cook stove. Yeah, you yeah. have. I'm obsessed with cook stoves. <laughs> I spent hours upon hours looking at cook stoves and I just dream about someday having a cook stove. Also thinking of money you could you could save too. Mm-hmm. Uh, not using all those fancy electrical electrical appliances <laughs> or Right. Or whatever. I mean, yeah, sure they're convenient, but I mean they're he- it's healthier for A little you work too. never killed anybody. <laughs> no, actually the opposite kills people. Yeah. Not working. Or or when your fancy, mm-hmm. you know, 15 button laser eye scanner washer breaks. <laughs> oh no, what do I do? Washer. I don't know what to do. You're, Wait, really? Yeah, when, when your washing machine... <laughs> Get out there with the hose and... <laughs> when your washing machine wash doesn't recognize your fingerprints, I, then you're in trouble and you can't wash your underwear. That's the bad thing about modern washers. I, I hate them. You can't open the lid until the thing stops, and it takes five minutes for it to stop, like, spinning, and it finally slows down. Right. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, my mom had one of those old ones where it was like, chung, 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 chung. So you raise up the lid, and you see the whole thing. I mean, how come they're not made like that anymore? If you forget to put something in, you can just lift the lid and throw it in there. Now you have to Really? Wait. Now you have to wait like 10 minutes for the whole thing to stop spinning. I think they do still make those. I think you just got, like, your family has a fancy one. A fancy? Yeah, fancy one. Because my mom, we had, I mean, at my mom's house, we had that one that you're talking about my whole life. Hmm. So I think the fancy, fancy ones, expensive ones are like that. But if you're broke enough, you can get whatever you want, Ron. Well... If you guys seen mm-hmm. the latest video on Early American, uh, Justine was doing yeah. laundry out I there. was doing laundry the old, old-fashioned way. Now, to be clear, I don't want to do laundry like that. That's <laughs> tough. That is the old, <laughs> old-fashioned way. I mean, 200 years ago. I want to do <laughs> it more like 100 years ago. Like Or more time. like 50 years ago. <laughs> Where it's kind of that balance between you're doing it by hand and at the same time you're not shortening your life expectancy because you want to have clean underwear. So <laughs> I'm doing that balance, that in between. The hand crank is nice. Gears are nice. Oh, yeah. Hand, there are hand crank washers too. That, I mean, that'd be nice to have. Tell them about the They're agitator. They're expensive though. Oh, yeah. That you would use. We didn't have one, but tell no, them about that. No, we didn't have one um, because not everyone would have had one back then, especially at, not out on the frontier. Oh. But, um, so, for a long time, I mean, since at least the early 18th century, they had wooden agitators. So you would have had your big basin of hot water that your clothes is soaking in, and then you would have had this agitator on a long wooden handle that you would have churned the soapy water or the clear water with it, and that just helps the water to flow through the fabric. Didn't it look like a stool on the bottom with, like, right. four little pegs right. and a T-handle and... Yeah, there's multiple styles to them, and each region kind of had their own. Whoever was just selling them in the area, what style they went with. But we've seen ones that look like stools. Yeah. So they have pegs on the bottom of it, kind of like a cow's udder. And then there's a long (laughs) handle, and that's what they use. Whereas the modern ones are shaped like a toilet plunger. (laughs) (laughs) That's what they're shaped like. What's a toilet plunger? It's something you need if you don't have a privy if you have plumbing. Oh, I don't know what plumbing is. Um, 
It's a pipe. Is it fruit? Plumbing? No, Plumbing. but some but no, but a fruit that you ate previously can go in it. <laughs> Your inner sure. your inner plumbing connects with this outside plumbing and okay. sometimes it gets clogged and so you have to use this device that looks like a triangle almost attached to a stick. It's very high tech. And you just You give it the Ugga You give it some suction. The Ugga Duggas. Yeah, the Ugga Duggas. But it yeah, but <laughs> it looks exactly like um, a laundry, a modern laundry agitator, not the ones you find in a plug in washing machine, but I mean the ones that you use in uh, large basins, uh -huh. like the Amish use it, Mennonites, okay. or just anyone who lives off grid will know what I'm talking about. So that's probably what I'll go with someday because that's very cheap. They also have hand crank ones. Um, if you buy them, you're going to be spending 400 to to $1,000 oh. on the hand crank ones, unless you get it, unless you get a vintage one from the 40s or 50s at an auction. I'm talking about the brand new ones though. Hmm. Uh, I know some people just make it, they weld it together. Knowing how smart you and your dad are, you could probably make it with 20 bucks worth of scrap. But the bucket is probably easy, so just go with that. Well, mm -hmm. we're ready to have some fun. Uh, have we not have been having fun? We've been having fun. <laughs> let's go. You mean with eggs? Let's go do some eggs. Okay, let's go do some eggs. Okay, so we found a little bit of a hill here. We're going to try the traditional Easter egg roll. It's very windy. Yeah, so hopefully the <laughs> wind will help mine go faster. And I found, I picked out two oval-shaped eggs. Ron egg has a snake on it, and my egg has a belly button on it. I, button. I don't know. Eyeball. It just got some transfer ink on it and it looks like a belly button. Oh, you've never heard of an egg with a belly right. button? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this thing. <laughs> All right. Count your paces. One, two, three. And then we roll it. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. What was that you threw it? It's going all the way. Of course he thinks I threw it, but I just won. Fair and square, and you saw it with your own eyes. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, you're making me feel so guilty. <laughs> I'm sorry, I won. Happy Easter, everybody. Yes, happy Easter. Thanks for watching. Actually, how about we do another game? Another game. What's another the, what's game. What's the other game? How about we do a game where we actually overhead throw it? It's gonna destroy it. You want to see who can throw the farthest? Yeah, let's see who can throw it the farthest. Okay, let's get her head. You kind of have an advantage because, you know, you have a much larger arm than okay, me. Okay, I'll throw <laughs> left-hander. Oh, really? So it's probably going to go over that way or straight down. Count to, count to three. One, two. Loser has to eat the eggs. Squirrel's going to eat it. All right. Eat the egg. No. Well, we're going to sign off here. we got dishes to do. Yes, we do. It's been great. Hope you all had a very happy Easter. And thank you for the company. Thank you guys. Yes. Very much. We appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. The yolk is intact, but uh, you eat it's it? not... You want me to eat it? Sure, it's fine. It's just got grass on it. Why? Because I lost? Yeah. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Or just a bite. It's just a joke! <laughs>